So a new James Bond is coming called Spectre. This word means a lot to Bond fans. But what exactly does it mean? What is Spectre? Well, if you're in a hurry and you just want to know really quickly, here's the short version. Spectre is basically the James Bond version of Hydra. It's a global organization of villains who have their fingers in every criminal pie. It's basically the mafia on steroids, but with the James Bond villain kind of flair. The word Spectre is an acronym for Special Executive of Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge and Extortion. And it is headed by Bond's arch nemesis, Ernst Stavros Blofeld, who so far we have not seen in any of the Daniel Craig movies yet, but it is heavily rumoured that the character that Christoph Waltz is playing will actually turn out to be Blofeld in the end. So that's the short version there. But if you're into James Bond, you know there's a lot more to Spectre than just that. So let's go a little deeper. Okay, Spectre was created by Ian Fleming as part of his James Bond books that spun off all the movies. And he created Spectre because at the time everyone was writing like in spy novels the KGB and the Soviets were the bad guys and that's who our heroes were going up against. Fleming however believed that the Cold War was going to end soon so that if he made the Soviets the bad guys it would date the books and it wouldn't stand the test of time. So he created Spectre as a global organization that's apolitical so that it would last and he was right. The top level members in Spectre has 21 individuals, 18 of whom handle all the day-to-day -day affairs, and they're drawn up into groups of three from six of the world's biggest criminal organizations. Some of these are real world, like the Mafia and the Gestapo. Others are fictional, just made up. But all of these members go by number, not by name. We will now proceed with the area of financial reports. Number seven. Blackmail of the double agent, Matsu Fujiwa. Number 10. Assassination of Pirange, the French antimatter specialist who went over to the Russians. 3 million francs from the special department of the Quai d'Orsay. Number 5. In the movies, this is just to demonstrate the hierarchy of the organizations, but in the books, it serves a very different need. It helps to keep the leadership protected from agencies such as MI6 and Bond trying to investigate Spectre. The numbering system keeps rotating. A guy who might be referred to as number 6 today might be referred to as number 12 tomorrow. So it's really hard for investigators to figure out who's in charge. But you'll notice that while 18 out of the 21 members are accounted for in this breakup of different criminal organizations, that leaves three. These three are the head of the octopus. They're the top dogs in Spectre. And just as that number rotating system helps to keep the Spectre members safe from investigators, these three at the top rotating their numbers around and taking turns at being the leader helps to protect them from any ambitious members of Spectre who might want to take over. They never know who's really in charge and the three often alternate the roles and are never all in the same place. So overthrowing Spectre is almost impossible. But all of that is just in the books. In the movies, the numbering is just to demonstrate the hierarchy. And in the movies, the top three are Blofeld as number one, who often doesn't show his face. It actually took five of the old movies before we even saw him. Emilia Largo is number two, and it's been said that he is ready to take over in case anything ever happened to Blofeld. And the number three has changed a few times because Bond has killed a couple of them. But usually it's reserved for like lead scientist guys. As a lot of Spectre's schemes usually involve like crazy techno stuff. A notable number three though was a physicist named Coates, formerly known as Emil Trout, as Coates actually defected from Spectre and joined with the good guys and that's how Spectre's existence actually became known in the first place. A common strategy for Spectre is to try and provoke war between two larger countries so that they can then jump in once it's over and take over. Siamese fighting fish, fascinating creatures, brave but of the whole stupid. Yes, they're stupid. Except for the occasional one such as we have here who lets the other two fight. While he waits. Waits until the survivor is so exhausted that he cannot defend himself. And then, like Spectre, he strikes. 
So even though Spectre will occasionally take contracts from like a few shady countries here and there, ultimately they're out for themselves and they want to rule the world. Spectre's headquarters is usually set as being in Paris and they hide behind a front of being a charity for aiding refugees. But let's talk about how any of this would fit into the Daniel Craig continuity. Well, in Casino Royale, Bond went up against an, at the time, unnamed organization that was represented by Mr. White. In Quantum of Solace, it was revealed that that organization's name was Quantum. Interestingly, in Bulgarian, the word Quantum actually translates to Spectre. And now that this new movie will feature Spectre, and again is showing Mr. White, in fact, one of the main characters is actually Mr. White's daughter that Bond is trying to protect. Why should I trust you? Because right now, I'm your best chance of staying alive. So it's a fair bet that Quantum is going to be one of those smaller groups that's included under the larger Spectre umbrella. And based off this line in the trailer... You came across me so many times, yet you never saw me. What took you so long? It would seem that Spectre did mastermind the events of Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Apparently they had nothing to do with Skyfall though. Mind you, that's probably because there was a whole lot of legal battles over the use of the name Spectre in the movies, which only got cleared up in 2013, so my guess is they used the name Quantum in the first two movies as a substitute for Spectre, and is probably why they didn't reference Spectre at all in the movie Skyfall, because they still weren't sure whether they would get the rights back to use the name. But any conversation about Spectre is incomplete without talking about its number one, Ernst Stavros Blofeld. James Bond. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ernst Stavro Blofeld. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. He is Spectre, essentially. And rumor has it that Christoph Waltz, character who's credited as Franz Obenhauser, is actually Blofeld. But we'll have more on that in just a second. But Blofeld has been portrayed a number of different times in the movies of the past, with slightly different looks for different actors. But without a doubt, his most memorable portrayal is Donald Pleasance in You Only Live Twice. All computer As you see, I am about to inaugurate a little war. In a matter of hours, when America and Russia have annihilated each other, we shall see a new power dominating the world. This villain was so iconic that he inspired countless copycats in the movies, and was the character that Dr. Evil was making fun of in the Austin Powers movies. And now more people identify Dr. Evil than they do Blofeld, so the parody has actually become the original. But Blofeld is basically the guy who is behind all of that classic Bond villainy type of stuff. All right, guard, begin the unnecessarily slow moving dipping mechanism. Close the tank! Wait, aren't you even gonna watch them? They could get away. No, no, no. I'm going to leave them alone and not actually witness them dying. I'm just gonna assume it all went to plan. What? I have a gun in my room. You give me five seconds, I'll get it. I'll come back down here, boom! I'll blow their brains out. Scott, you just don't get it, do you? You don't. So if your first exposure to the James Bond franchise has been the Daniel Craig movies, and if you want to maybe go back and watch one of the older ones to get a feel for what classic Bond is, which will most likely add to your enjoyment of this movie Spectre, as the franchise does seem to be moving back into a more classical mold, I'd recommend that you go and see You Only Live Twice. In my opinion, that is the best of the old movies. Although Moonraker is also pretty good. But yes, while it's not confirmed yet, Unless they're doing some kind of amazing smoke and mirror stuff, Christoph Waltz's character of Franz Obenhauser is really Blofeld. Because in the trailer, he's shown to be the leader of Spectre, he's hiding his face in the shadows like the old Blofeld did, he's wearing Blofeld's classic jacket, and a photo was leaked of him with CGI dots on his face that they used to like map a digital effect onto someone, which will probably be the scars that we saw in You Only Live Twice. So yeah, safe to say, this is our new Blofeld. But also in the trailers, there is what looks to be some kind of adoption papers, showing that after Bond's parents died, 
he was briefly taken in by the Obenhauser family. Which means in this movie, Bond and Blofeld are actually brothers in this version? I really hope they're not going to go with that just because that's exactly what Mike Myers did in Austin Powers 3. So if they do that here in Spectre, Mike Myers was satirizing that before it even existed. But, um, all I'm saying, they're gonna get a, I, I'm just, we, we, knock, knock, who's there? Look, let me tell you a little story about a man named, even before you start, that was a preemptive, just know I have a whole bag of, with your name on it. So there you have it guys, there's an overview of the organization of Spectre and what it means for the James Bond franchise. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen yet, I was recently in a podcast called Movie Maintenance by the Plumbing the Death Star crew, where we talked about Jurassic World. I was there, Mr. Sunday Movies was there, and there's another one coming out soon that we all did, recorded immediately after it, called Fantastic Four. So go to iTunes, type in Movie Maintenance to find them, the Plumbing the Death Star guys. And it's Jurassic World, that podcast. So thanks so much, guys. And until next time, I will see you in the comments.